How's it going guys? So quite often I get asked, can you use a laptop for 3D animation or do I need to build a computer for it to be able to handle what 3D has to offer? Now, right now I think is a really good time to talk about this because everyone's going back to school um, and you're gonna need something to handle whatever your creative classes are gonna be asking you to do. Typically that means having a laptop, something that's mobile. Um, so today I really wanna talk about that and the, the answer very simply is yes. Absolutely, you can use a laptop for 3D animation and laptops can handle it, especially with today's tech. And in fact, the first two years of making tutorials on this YouTube channel was on a laptop. For two years, I was just doing tons and tons of videos and all these tutorials were done on a laptop. And uh, at the same time, I was in film school. So my last two years of high school, I was in film school. So I was learning After Effects. I was learning, learning a little bit of Cinema 4D, different stuff like that all the while using a laptop and I never felt like, golly, I need so much power, my, my laptop just can't handle this. So today I wanna talk about that and figure out kind of what's good for you. So that's what today's video is all about is laptops. Now today's video is brought to you by NVIDIA Studio. They were kind enough to give me a laptop to show you guys and talk about it. So first I do wanna talk about this laptop, all the features, how much I like it. And also we're gonna be talking about laptops in just kind of a general sense and figure out what's good for you. All right, now let's talk about this laptop. Now this is the Dell XPS 17. It's loaded up with an NVIDIA RTX 3060 and a 11th gen Intel Core i9. It's a beast, it's, it's an awesome laptop. Now it comes with a touchscreen 4K screen and it has incredible speakers. Um, that's just a personal take, the speakers are just, Awesome, that was one of the first things that I was blown away by this laptop. I've had a lot of laptops in my time and these are by far the most impressive speakers, especially for listening to music. And aesthetically, it's a very pleasing laptop to look at. It has a nice low profile design. The keyboard is really nice, it's nice and responsive. And I've been recording and editing this entire video on this laptop. I have my camera connected to the laptop, running feed through it. I'm also screen recording with the laptop, running with the uh, blender designs and editing all of the stuff on this laptop. It it really goes through the paces and it, it, it performs really well. Now in terms of rendering speeds, the viewport performance on this laptop was very impressive to me and rendering was really fast too. And of course my favorite render engine, Eevee, ran super smooth. Now there's a lot of value in this if you are a student and you're going back to class. Um, you need something mobile, but you need something that you can rely on and not have to go, oh, and wait till I get home so I can deal with this, this assignment. You can do it in class with a laptop like this that has the power that different creative classes are gonna ask you for. I went to school for design, I know what they take, and this computer, I really wish I had it when I was in college. And on the topic of editing, this thing can handle 8K footage. If you're a filmmaker and you're dealing with that, I don't deal with that kind of footage. I'm barely working with 4K for most of the time, but if you need to, if you need 8K, this computer can handle it. Now, this is not the only configuration from Dell on the XPS line that you can get. There is a myriad of configurations for whatever budget you have, so you're not confined to really hefty builds. You can get a more simple one. It really just depends on your budget, and the XPS line can have that for you. Now, NVIDIA Studio offers some drivers that, in my opinion, you have to have if you're using NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, so it's the NVIDIA Studio drivers, and I know specifically for me, there's been several times where I'm trying to render something, and the render just won't start at all, which is like infuriating. And so what I'll do is I'll go check to see if the Studio driver needs to be updated, and more times than not, it does. I'll update the driver, and then I'll go ahead, try to render again, and it will be perfect. So the drivers have saved my life many times, and back when I did a lot of client work, it really saved um, those projects. Now the NVIDIA Studio drivers help with your performance, optimizing your performance, and they also help with AI and GPU accelerator programs. Like for me, I'm using the GPU accelerator programs a lot, of course, being Blender and the Adobe apps for editing and doing thumbnails and all that kind of stuff. I haven't dabbled in AI that much, but they're doing a lot of really cool stuff with AI and NVIDIA Studio really helps with those. All right, now let's just talk about using laptops in a general sense to kind of give you an idea. If you are shopping for a laptop, what you should look for. This is the only thing I tell people. I don't get into the nitty gritty. You have to have this and you have to have this. These are the required things if you're gonna be able to do da 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 da. There's too many moving parts for me to be able to say exactly what you need because really it just comes down to budget at the end of the day. Um, the only piece of advice that I say if you're choosing a laptop, I my opinion is it needs to have an NVIDIA GPU. If it doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU, 
you're going to have a hard time. I mean, you're just going to need to have a GPU. Now, NVIDIA is one of the few companies that I do say I am loyal to. There's a lot of big companies that I don't really say I'm loyal to. I just use their tech all the time. I really do love NVIDIA, which is I'm very excited that they're partnering with me for this video. Um, but aside from that, I really do vouch for their, their tech, and I think it's good. If you have an NVIDIA GPU in your laptop, you're going to have a better time with 3D, and things are going to go a lot more smoother. So if you're shopping for a laptop, looking for your budget, and you're kind of building your laptop, picking features, pick the NVIDIA GPU, preferably you know a 30 series because that's the new tech. Of course, I know that gets pricey. You can get away with GTX stuff sometimes too. Um, it's really, of course, it's about budget, what you can afford. So I, want, I don't wanna only say, hey, you can only use $5,000, $3,000 laptops or 3D. That's not true. Um, and also it comes down to optimizing your blender settings. Even if you don't have the most powerful computer, you can optimize. I think one of my favorite spots to optimize is my light bounces. So a lot of times I'll go to light bounces, I'll click and drag and put everything to one. And that significantly helps my render, uh, my render times if I'm using cycles. Now, for a lot of what I do with laptops is I render an Eevee. Uh, Eevee is a lifesaver if you're just trying to make some work. And then once you're done, Check it in cycles, uh, viewport performance on any laptop with a 30 series GPU, uh, NVIDIA GPU, is your, your viewport um, your viewport render times are gonna be great. And then you can send it off to a render farm, which I know costs money, or just render overnight. In fact, I think, I think a lot of beginners don't know that even professionals with expensive uh, computers, they're rendering their stuff overnight because they don't wanna use a render farm either. It is completely normal during the eight hours that you're sleeping to hit the render button, go to sleep, wake up, boom, you have an animation. So render times are always slow. They're faster for other people, but at the end of the, time, at the, end of the day, if you're doing photorealistic, very crazy renders, your renders are gonna be slow. Now, depending on the tech, of course, how slow, how hard it is to use it. Um, but when I got started out, I was on a laptop and I had, I had a computer with a GTX, um, I don't remember what it is. I don't exactly remember the, the GTX, but it wasn't the most powerful GPU, but it was an NVIDIA GPU. And I was able to make tutorials. I was able to have really good viewport performance. And it, it, it worked. It worked for two years until I was able to afford something bigger and better. Um, so I, you know, I, I really do get a lot of questions about this. And the answer is, yeah, use a laptop. They're gonna work out for you. It's it, Don't be so concerned that, my artwork sucks because I'm on a laptop. That's just not the case. I was making really cool projects and some of the, my, some of my favorite projects I've ever worked on are on laptops. Now, when I first got my hands on this laptop from NVIDIA, I wanted to kind of put it through the paces of what I require from a laptop with my work. I don't do you know, everything in 3D. So with Mojo Graphics, with the, the kind of geometry node stuff that I've been building right now, a lot of that stuff, I wanted to put it through a whole project and see how well it did. And I wanted to kind of give you guys a breakdown of that project so you can see how this laptop did, uh, so you can get an idea of what laptops are capable of, um, because this whole topic is about laptops and figuring out what's good for you. So this was completely done in Eevee, which is something I constantly use on the channel. So the animation, here it is in real time, not any lag. Um, especially when you're using materials with bump, um, a lot of geometry node stuff, it starts to lag. Perfectly smooth, of course, uh, and those fans are going to kick on, but they're not as loud as a lot of the fans that I've experienced on other laptops, so it's not annoying. I've used laptops where it's like a jet engine. So this laptop is really made to be pretty quiet, uh, but this is the full geometry node scene. Uh, for those of you on my Patreon, you can go ahead and grab that um, now. Um, but we have kind of this animated light here and uh, we can go check out the geometry node setup for that. We have actually a few individual pieces for some more control. So I know we have the icosphere here, uh, which is really fun, and we threw a dual mesh node on there to give it that kind of soccer ball look. And then we took that same exact thing, and instead of extruding some faces here, which we use that fun little extrude node um, right here, which doesn't get used very much on the channel, but it's really cool. My only issue with it is it's hollow. You can see those edges there. I'd love to see that solidified. Um, but we also have this wireframe, which is the same exact shape, but in, instead of you know having it full, we did some uh, mesh to curve, curve to mesh, and then we used a one of these guys to give it a wireframe. And then what's really great about wireframes, which we did the same thing here, we took a grid and then we subdivided it very little, 
and then we put a noise texture on it. So it's really easy. If you have very spread out wireframe, you can put a noise texture on it and you can't really tell it's a noise texture unless you've been using 3D for a while. Uh, but you can see how the uh, noise texture is really dancing around on this hexagon cube. I mean, what, what did I just say? This hexagon shape, um, but the icosphere here. So if we go to shading, go back to the render view, you can see how right here, let's see which one am I clicked on. So it's just a noise texture plugged into the principle because part of that wire, wireframe is a metallic material. We have a noise texture plugged into it. So now we plug another noise texture into the emission. And so that really allows you to mix two things together. Um, being able to kind of plug that in really saves me time. So I don't have to do some mix shader stuff. And then we have, of course, this plugged in to a noise texture. So now if we animate the rotation of the placement of that emission material, it's gonna dance around our icosphere. So if we go to the view here, we can see. So what happens is we have our camera comes down, everything's moving around. It just looks cool. It looks interesting. Um, you know, of course, all the while doing this, you're able to see this is, this is real time with this laptop and it's running perfectly. Uh, if I pull the volume off, which volume always kills uh, <laughs> cycles, render speed, especially in the viewport. Uh, if we go to the volume here, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. And then let's switch over to cycles, just so you can get a, uh, get a look. This is the viewport performance on cycles. It's really quick, and if I press play, you can even see that, that whole thing animating here. In my opinion, it's pretty impressive. Um, even when I started four years ago, laptops have come a long way, especially like in my old laptop, I probably wouldn't be able to see performance this good. Um, but we can now. And you know, you have this really cool piece. Of course, adding those volumetrics really is gonna screw you up. But that's even with my, my big computer, I wouldn't have good viewport performance on volume. So that's not really a deal breaker there. Uh, but here in Eevee, not a single problem with this piece. And of course this floor material, I've probably shown it a hundred times on the channel. Um, it's a Voronoi. You can see we plugged a Voronoi material here on the bottom and that's gonna give you this kind of greeble look. Really love the style there. And then the same thing here on the, on the ground plane with geometry nodes. Very simple grid subdivided to eight. Added that mesh to curve, curve to mesh. Then use that circle curve. And um, we now have magic. Um, now the, the, the cool thing is the camera rig. It's very fun. If I show you here in the flat view, maybe my, the fans will turn off here. Um, what it is, is a camera rig. So the camera is constrained to a circle and then it is, there's a empty here that the, the camera is kind of locked onto. So the, the uh, camera is only looking at that empty. So if we watch the animation, the circle just comes down in kind of a diagonal motion. So it starts up there, moves over this direction, and you get this very, very cool look. And also I believe the camera rotates. So if we watch the camera's position here, the camera is going to rotate itself that direction, giving you this re really nice look. So notice the camera rotates a little bit. And then if I go to the camera view, we can kind of see the magic of that coming down with this really cool look. So that's kind of the breakdown of that. Um, and also it's just kind of give you a sneak peek of the performance of this laptop. It's awesome. Laptops will not limit you, especially if you are considering yourself a beginner and you're just trying to learn 3D. A laptop's gonna be your best bet. Otherwise you're gonna be paying a lot of money for a computer build. And also if you don't really know much about tech, like I recommended, just get a laptop with a GPU, with a Nvidia GPU. Everything else they put on that laptops to kind of go with that NVIDIA GPU is gonna support it. You're gonna have a good laptop. Uh, but that's kind of the breakdown of this guy. Zooming in here. See, I can, I'm can. i zooming in. Of course, if we're zooming into materials with bump on them, if I can kinda... And we're zooming in here, and a lot of times when you're working on a laptop that's not very powerful, if you zoom in on animations here, it's gonna to start to lag because it's really gonna to start to process those small details. Still, it's awesome, still it works. Um, impressive, 
Laptops are awesome. They're really good. They work. So if you came to this video wanting to find out if you can use laptop for 3D, I hope you got your answer. I hope you're happy with the answer. Um, I want to thank NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video. Very happy to be working with these guys. Uh, I've been using their tech since the day I started with 3D. I've always been happy with what they've been making. Uh, so I want to thank them. Uh, but with that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.